Hi, my name is Tito Abraham and I work as a product manager for oscilloscopes from Rudin Schwartz. Today we've got uh, one of our RTO 2000 series oscilloscopes. It's a 4 gig uh, oscilloscope um, with up to 4 analog channels and an MSO capability as well. And we've managed to connect it to a um, IMEX 86 inch touchscreen. Um, so just to show you uh, how much and how amplified you can get the whole touchscreen. So um, this just gives you a, a quick idea of the, the whole uh, UI itself and I hopefully walk you through in this video exactly where all the elements are and where you can find everything. So it, it is a completely touchscreen so you can actually uh, change the, the trigger settings and so on and things as well just by uh, using your finger. Um, and the main idea behind the uh, the unit itself is you've got the, the most of the screen area for the for the graphing and you've got this side here where you use to actually display all the settings of the instrument so things like the horizontal settings on the top there so what the ADC is sampling at, what the record length and what the time scale is you've got trigger settings just down at the bottom there so giving you what the level is obviously and what kind of trigger you've got and then for a particular channel that's active, you've got this uh, bubble here, which gives you the vertical settings on that particular instrument. So what the, time, uh, what the uh, uh, vertical settings are, if it's DC, AC coupled, 50 ohms, and so on and things. So for any of these, you can actually just tap, and then you'll go into that particular menu to actually set them up and so on. So in here, you can actually change the waveform averaging and envelope, or if you go into there, here you can actually change the... Uh, ADC and the record length and also the acquisition time if you wanted to. If you go press that then you can go into the trigger menu you can choose the different types of triggers and so on and things within the RTO and if you press the, the actual channel button then you'll get this sort of block diagram which gives you an idea of what exactly is going on within the scope itself. So you've got the probe set up just there so if I click that you can actually see I'm using a differential probe here uh, where it shows okay, how much offset there is within that signal itself and I can actually change and tweak all these different settings if I wanted to or just go back into the channel setup where I get to see what kind of coupling I've got so you can see here I bypass the one make phone amplifier I can change the offset, the vertical scale, the position, the bandwidth and so on and things and as, I, as you can see I've got these cross links to go to acquisition go back to channel setup, go back to trigger setup, go back to channel setup and so on You've also got the uh, menu bar on the bottom there, which actually gives you an idea of all the different settings uh, on the unit that's available. So you, um, the menu is designed so they're only about two levels deep, so in about three clicks you can find everything that you would need. Um, the other things on the instruments are uh, you've got the, um, the, the little icons on the top there. Um, so let me just grab this back here onto the main screen you've got all the icons on the top there um, so this gives you all the quick access tools that you probably want to find and they're mostly buried in a menu or so on so you have things like undo redo keys there so you can go backwards and forwards so it remembers up to 20 steps that you can actually go backwards and forwards um, you have the little balloon help there so you can actually tap any of these and it'll actually tell you what exactly they are and you can hit the show help and it comes up with the full manual where it gives you a lot more detail on what all of these things are actually doing. Um, with this toolbar itself, you have a little uh, settings wheel there that you can actually bring up, add, remove any of these icons on uh, onto the whole unit. Um, so I'll give you an idea of how to actually work with some of these. So you've got the, the little zoom icon there, so you can actually select that. When you select them, the sidebar populates with the information here on how to actually set up the zoom. So you have different zoom uh, settings there. Most people would use the standard zoom. And then with your finger or a mouse, you can drag a box that you actually want to do a zoom on. So you see the full time capture that we had before, and then the zoomed area down here below. And then you can actually tweak that, change that with your finger, or you can pick up that box, drag it along to another point in time, um, if I want to change the width of that, then I can just select the zoom key again and then draw a box inside here to zoom inside uh, in a bit more detail, let's say. 
Now to get rid of, any, of anything on the screen, you can hit the trash bin icon on the top there and then just tap anything there. So that's equivalent to actually switching off the channel as well. So now you can see it switched off my particular channel. And I either have to do undo or, or yeah, um, bring that back channel back up. You've also got measurements on there as well. So you've got the measurement uh, sign there. So you've got all the measurement keys down here. So you've got amplitude and time jitter, eye diagram measurements, spectrogram and histogram measurements. So within this list, um, you can choose which kind of measurements you would need and then um, populate a few there and then select the particular channel that you want to do the measurement on. So there you'll be able to see then the measurements that come up and then you can actually pick this up, move it along, um, either dock it to the bottom there so it's not obstructing anything that you would want to actually see within your signal. Um, you can also do, you can just um, probably tap that again and then you'll bring up the whole menu for that particular measurement as well, just there. Um, at the moment I've only got one channel switched on um, and hence you see a lot of space here. So uh, when you switch on a second or a third or fourth channel then you see these bubbles get populated as well on the side here so you can then get to see all the information for that particular channel as well and you might have noticed that uh, on the graphical area uh, we have annotations for um, for the actual channel that's in focus so you can actually quickly see what my time period is and what amplitude there is without most of the time using cursors and so on um, now when you have all four channels switched on um, Generally, the trend is that you change the gain of one of them so that you can actually make sense of all the channels that's in that's on the that's on the graphical area. So you actually change the gain of that, move that along, switch on the second channel, and lay them out neatly and nicely so that you can actually see everything that's going on at one particular point in time, um, which is absolutely fine. But if you're actually doing any measurements, any cursors, they're mostly display based. So then you would have to actually look at the full area of your screen because it will be an 8-bit ADC or any type of ADC will have across that level the whole range, the dynamic range of the, of the ADC. So uh, everyone recommends that you use the full real estate of that whole screen so if you wanted to characterize the ripple on a pulse and so on you can make repeatable measurements which is okay but if you've got multiple measurements on if you've got multiple channels on the screen can get quite hard to read. So for that reason uh, we use this little minimize icon, so say you have a, a trigger channel that you rarely want to see, you can hit the minimize key there and then it goes onto the side. Um, so what that is, is a live waveform, so if I were to take the probe out, you'll see that it's switched off, put it back on again, it comes back. So it's a live waveform, it's a, it, it actually captures the data every single time and um, it's not a JPEG or a preview or anything. So you can actually then see that live waveform and make sure that everything's working still. Um, anything that you want to bring back into the main screen, just drag that particular channel and put it onto there. And then you'll get that channel back into the screen. And any second channel that you bring up, it brings up a grid. So if you put it on top, it becomes an overlay like before. If you bring it down to the side here, it then becomes tool screen. And then you can adjust the, the height and width of all of that as you bring up a third channel in. It gives you additional grids if you like, so you can put it on the top there, or at the bottom there, any way you like it. So it's really geared on how you want to visualize uh, your signals that you're debugging and so on. So you can actually then see all the signals that you really want to see. I guess that's everything that's available on the RTO 2000. Um, for more information, please have a look on our website.